All right, this is class number 19, the second class on Islam. And I'm going to start with the Quran. And I would like you to, there's, I posted a lot of pages of the Quran, um, 29, which is two pages per page. So it's way too many. But I would like you to read some of it. Um, and I'm going to read out loud some of it also, so that you understand, just get a feel for the text. Um, all of it is God speaking to, um, to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. Um, as for him who gives in charity and acts piously and put his, puts his trust in that which is best, his path to ease we shall facilitate. But as for him who's stingy, who boasts in his riches and treats the best as a lie, we shall facilitate his path of lack of ease. And not a whit will his wealth profit him when he falls. So I give you warning of a fire that blazes. None will be roasted except the most wretched who has counted the message false and has turned away. So, I mean, it is a final judgment, very vivid final judgment uh, religion, unlike Buddha, Hindu, Confucian, um, uh, even Judaism, I don't think has anything like that. So, not that I know of. Um, anyway, to what extent, does this threat of does this threat of eternal salvation or damnation is it the motive for why people act the way they do? And if it is, that's an ulterior motive. You don't really like virtue. You only do it begrudgingly for a reward, and you actually prefer vice, and you only resist it because of some eternal punishment well then your character you know that's a corruption of character you should want to do what's best um then there is a surya number 86 that says do thou show fair forbearance to the unbelievers grant grant them a little respite respite so you're supposed to tolerate unbelievers, according to Surya 86. Um, according to um, Surya 91, um, Muhammad was treated a blind person uh, discourteously, where he sort of kissed up to the rich and neglected the poor. And um, God scolded him. He frowned and turned his back because the blind man had come to him, Muhammad. And what will teach thee? Maybe he will purify himself or be reminded so that the reminding will profit him. As for he who's rich, why to him thou didst give much attention? And what dost thou care that he does not purify himself? But as for him who comes to thee in earnest search, while he is in fear for her soul, for his soul, you are neglectful of those who truly repent. And so God is scolding Muhammad. Death to man, how great, how ungrateful he is. And so that's the notion of the infidel just means being ungrateful. Then um, here's another Surya 109. The Meccan leaders had made a proposition that they would give Muhammad um, a certain recognition if he would acknowledge the deities worshiped at their shrine. Okay, so um, just like Jesus was tempted, right, to worship, um, to, to um, worship the devil, right? Uh, Muhammad was tempted, he was given an offer, and he turned it down. Um, let's see. Ah, here's the section where um, the Quran includes all the old characters from the Old Testament and 
Boy, I was so surprised when I read this. Now, when his Lord summoned Moses saying, go to the people, the people of Pharaoh. Um, but Moses said, oh, my Lord, I, I fear indeed that they will count me false. Moreover, my breast is strained and my tongue moves not freely. So send my brother Aaron. I remember this from the Old Testament that Moses was not a good public speaker. And so uh, he asked that his brother be sent. And, um, and Pharaoh said, no, no. So both of you should go to the Pharaoh. Okay, then he spoke to uh, Mo Moses, telling him to uh, split the, the Red Sea. And so we have that story of the Red Sea. We have the story of Noah. Um, so Noah is there, Lot is there. Um, um, let's see, here we go. For those who do, do well, there's a fine reward in this world. Nevertheless, the, dwell, the dwelling of the hereafter is better. And how excellent is the dwelling of those who show piety. Gardens of Eden, which they will enter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So again, the reward for the good, and he even refers to the Garden of Eden. Um, ah, here's the, the fact that there are Jews. Um, we ordained for them, God says to Muhammad, we ordained for the Jews the Torah a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose. So, and we made Jesus, son of Mary, follow in their traces, right? The next gener the next religion follows from, confirming what of the Torah was there present. And we gave him the gospel in which his guidance and a light, confirming what of the Torah was there and a guidance and admonition for those who show piety. Um, and then finally, he said, we gave you Muhammad. We have set down to you, Muhammad, the book with truth, confirming what of scripture was there and protecting it. So um, for each party of you, we have instituted a rule of life and a path. And had Allah so willed it, he would have made you one community, but he has made you different communities that he might test you by that which he has given you. Uh, so seek preeminence in things that are good. So the point is that you're supposed to tolerate each religion because Allah created them or allowed for one to follow the other so that people would be tested according to their virtue, not according to their orthodox beliefs. Um, then there's one, um, it talks about the revelation, Surya 53. It is not but a revelation that has been revealed to him. One mighty in power taught him, that's Gabriel. Um, then there's the section where women have a right to the inheritance, um, half as much as men, but still that was way, <laughs> very forward looking. Then um, if a woman uh, is unfaithful to her husband, the husband has to bring forth four witnesses. So he can't just uh, claim his wife is unfaithful in order to get rid of her. He has to have witnesses. Now, of course, that gets corrupted too because he gets three, four buddies to do it. But still, Muhammad was, this was way ahead of where women otherwise were, which is like if a guy wanted to condemn her, that was it. She was toast. Um, um, let's see. Then there is, okay, so because of the Jews taking usury, though they had been forbidden in the Bible and they're wrongfully consuming these people's property, we have gotten ready for the unbelievers among them a painful punishment. But for those among them firmly established in knowledge, 
who believe what's been sent down to thee, then um, we shall give a great reward. So just being Jewish isn't going to make you punished. It's usury. It's violating what's in the holy text. Um, okay. Oh, oh, people of the book, there has come to you our messenger, making clear for you much of the book that you were concealing and overlooking much. Allah will guide whoever will follow his good pleasures into ways of peace. It will bring them out of darkness to the light. Um, they indeed are in unbelief who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. Say, who then would control Allah at all should he desire to destroy the Messiah, the son of Mary? Um, so he... Um, so he, you know, doesn't accept that Jesus was God, but he does accept that they are all children. We are all Allah's children and his beloved one. Um, so he grants forgiveness to whom he will. He punishes whom he will. Allah's is the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and what is between them both. And to him is the returning. O oh, people of the book, there has come to you our messenger, making clear for you these matters after an interval among the messengers, right, the different prophets. Um, so he just weaves the traditions all together. And then the last thing is that fellow, the believer, is the one, um, woe to those who pray but are careless about praying who are all ma for making a show, but withhold assistance from the needy. And that, of course, is exactly what Jesus said. When you pray, pray in secret. Um, when you give alms, uh, give from, give um, of your abundance. Don't, the widow who gave, who gave two cents was more generous than the rich folk who made a big show of giving a lot more because it was a much bigger percent and it was uh, a bigger sacrifice on her part. So that's the Quran. And then um, I definitely want you to read these news articles. Um, there's 14 pages, but they're all important. And I have some outlines about them, but definitely please read that or just eyeball it. And, and this one, and then the last two are especially important. You really should read about Al Jazeera, this um, news feed. Now I'm not quite sure where it is at this moment, but I, when I was in a hospital in Indonesia, I watched BBC World, CNN World, and Al Jazeera, and I got much, much better news than I ever got in the US. It's about the world, whereas American news, 7% of it is international. It's all so obsessed on yourself, focused. It's very narcissistic. It's all about Americans talking about Americans. And then of that 7%, so much of that is just about our troops and how they're doing. But if you watch these other news feeds, my gosh, you get a totally different image of the world out there in your head. Um, this one is really important because it's about liberal arts education. And Chapel Hill assigned a book about the Quran that the freshmen had to read before they came to campus. And this Christian group uh, took them to court claiming that this was forced Islamic indoctrination. And so you really should read that and you should think about what you think, right? Because they interviewed um, some of the students. In the discussions and interviews, students said the debate have been overblown. Some students said they were opposed to the assignment, said they were glad to have read the book. If they objected to it, it was just because it was boring, <laughs> which I think is so funny. Um, you know, grownups make such a big deal of these things and the students like, I don't know, it put me to sleep. Anyway, the fact is we're a liberal arts school that's supposed to open our minds. 
So you think about that, and then, then you have to realize that this is problematic. Like Dr. Beck would not be allowed to teach her class the way I teach it at certain universities in our country. Um, all right, so that's interviews with students. And then this is um, an editorial about that event. And this is really important too, because um, Mr. Friedman says that the freedom of thought and multiple culture, cultural and political perspectives is, is, is uh, what nurtures a critical mind. And that's at the root of innovation, scientific inquiry, entrepreneurship, and incidentally, democracy. And so he says the problem isn't that American students are reading a book about the Quran. The problem is that students in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere are not reading like the founding fathers, our constitution, our bill of rights, things like that that there isn't enough cultural exchange, not that there's too much. Um, then I have, um, let's see. So I have outlines about those articles. This is another short one, just three pages long. I would like you to read that. And then this one is just an outline and it has a lot of themes that will just continue throughout. Um, that, that are just continuations of what we've already talked about. So I would like you to, um, to look at that and bring that up. You know, you can discuss whatever you like from it, but we're gonna talk about that. And then the chapter on Islam and women. Um, so, uh, so the politics of body images. So the first one is, you know, when women in Islam cover themselves, is that so awful? Um, is it, who is more oppressed? Women who are covered or women who dress to expose their bodies and make themselves desirable to men, right? Women who objectify themselves in order to attract the male gaze. Like which one is more oppressed? at least it's an open question, right? It's not obvious. Um, there's a sense in which if you put on a burqa every day, you don't have to be self-conscious. Uh, men aren't gonna eyeball you. You aren't gonna compete for other women for who gets the most eyeballs, you know? And all sorts of crap that I, I don't know. The last time I, I, did this, which I remember was junior high, but that's quite a while ago. I still remember it though. I mean, come on. So anyway, um, Islam was invented by Westerners to distinguish between modern and traditional cultures. Well, that's the same with Hinduism as a religion, Buddhism as a religion. That was all as a way to, you know, say we're modern and they're not. Uh, marginalize them. So the Quran can be interpreted as, as pro-feminist, as I said before. All the other cultural sources, authority, were much more sexist, but it also can be interpreted as sexist and a violation of women's rights. It's an entire way of life. It, the anti-feminist aspects are men allow, are allowed to have four wives. Um, women only one husband, men can marry Jews or Christians, women only Muslims, women have to be veiled, there's strict male supervision, women are confined to the household, um, men had free access to female slaves, right? So the way that played out was sexist, but there are also pro-feminist aspects of it. Early on, men and women worshiped together. Women could interpret the religious law. So early on, it was less institutionalized, fewer barriers. Um, you know, once it gets institutionalized, it becomes more sexist, more racist, more power-driven, more money-driven, more legitimizing of the privileged, more class-based. 
it's the same as every other religion. Um, the authoritative texts are always written by men, for men, about women, which again is ink. Let's see, the Quran defends the weak against the strong. So, and I, as I pointed out, they have rights much more like men than they did in the, in the culture genera, generally. Um, let's see. The Quran, yeah, there's the anti-feminist. It allows for beating disobedient wives, just like Hinduism. Um, okay, but then, yeah. Okay, here's where Muhammad favored a woman's right to retaliate, but he was overruled by subsequent revelation. So how much of this, you know, was an original revelation and how much is, it? oh, I have another revelation. So, um, so all of that is the God never speaks to women. There's a biased context. Um, Muhammad's way of life is um, how he wrote down the Islamic law, just like everything else. Once it got written down, it got interpreted, re-examined, rehashed according to the prejudices and agendas of the people doing it. Uh, then Sharia law was considered to be divine. It was developed in the context of sexist culture. Um, Muhammad explicitly forbade collecting his sayings because he knew the sayings would be venerated and be given too much authority and used as a weapon against people but they were collected and they are definitely a uh, straight jacket. You know, they are what's emphasized and they're oppressive laws and they're the Taliban, you know, can have lots of references, I'm sure. Um, and the male experts, the males are the legal experts. And so after centuries of doing this, male domination and misogyny prevail. But there is another tradition of interpreting it that uses reason. And my friends in Indonesia uh, are uh, take that approach, the more progressive approach. Um, so we can use the Quran to promote progressive treatment of women. But of course, we know that it isn't always used that way. Um, then there is pluralism in Islam. Um, Mohammed allowed a woman to divorce her husband just because of what he looked like. Uh, jurists said women should be able to become judges. Uh, there's no discussion of the veiling of women. Um, most women, Muslim women exercise many of the same rights as the women in Western countries. I know in Indonesia, um, in the schools where I taught the colleges, it was very egalitarian. A lot of the administrators were women. I would say I met more women deans and administrators than men. At least it was equal. So women were getting the more powerful positions and that was great. Um, so the Quran focuses on God. The focus is on God and um, humility before God and all the, you know, the general values of every religious tradition. Um, so we're right back to where we started. But after reading a little bit more about whether Islam is actually sexist or not. So I would like, oh, I will post the excerpts from the Quran here. And then I will expect you, I mean, the excerpts from Houston Smith's book and then we will move on from there um my computer is going to shut down so if i didn't get those posted quickly then it might be tomorrow but uh hopefully it'll work out so 